We are very fortunate uh, to have with us today uh, Libby Schaff, who is the current mayor of Oakland, California. Uh, elected in November 2014, she uh, co-founded the not-for-profit Oakland Cares, which organized and implemented hundreds of volunteer community improvement projects across the city. She was a top aide to former mayor and current governor of California, Jerry Brown, and the city of Oakland is also notable for its energy and climate action plan, where it's planning to reduce GHG emissions 36% by 2020, along with a whole host of, of package of uh, reductions and incentives around that. So, Libby Chef. Great, thank you. It's exciting to be here representing the power of cities. Now, you should all know why cities are such an important part of the climate change conversation. Cities are producing 70% of the energy-related carbon emissions in the planet. And so we clearly play an important role if we're going to actually make tangible changes. In the business community, there is a myth that businesses can't afford to take climate change actions. But as the CEO of a large organization, because in Oakland, we have a strong mayor from a government, so I'm not just the chief elected officer, I'm also the chief executive officer. I can tell you that we can't afford not to take climate change action. Certainly as a coastal city, Oakland is on the San Francisco Bay. We're part of the mighty Bay Area, which I think, you know, California is a large economy in and of itself. The Bay Area, I think, has an economy about the size of Sweden's. Um, we on the coast also have got to pay close attention to this issue. And it can save you money. Uh, we in Oakland switched out all of our street lights, more than 30,000 street lights, to LED. But we were able to finance that simply off of the savings from our energy bill. Again, climate action can save you money. Uh, we switched our diesel fleets to using renewable diesel fuel at zero additional cost to us. And yet this fuel is producing 70% fewer emissions. For a city like Oakland, climate change, green tech, clean tech is also a huge economic driver for us. We have more than 350 companies in the green and clean tech sectors that employ more than 7,000 workers in our city. So it is clearly an economic engine for us. And as far as partnerships go, we are very focused in Oakland on marrying our climate change goals with our social justice and equity goals. And that's where partnerships have truly been powerful for us. We have uh, entered into several partnerships, including with uh, the California Youth uh, Employment Partnership, um, as well as a great organization called Rising Sun to do job training and to do job training in low-income communities of color so that we can actually educate people in communities that don't always find out about energy efficiency improvements. And these can be the citizens that go out in the communities that they grew up in and help homeowners, uh, apartment dwellers, reap the benefits of energy efficiency, which not only can help save them money on their monthly energy bills, but also help save the planet as well, as well as provide great jobs for um, a growing sector. Uh, and finally, Rising Sun specifically works on our community members who are returning from prison to give them a great skill and a great entry back into our society. So those are just some of the examples of how we partner with businesses, how we partner with nonprofits. We're doing a lot of collaboration with our other governments. Um, the PACE program in California is a really important tool. It allows uh, homeowners, property owners, to finance energy efficiency improvements on their property tax bills. And that's a beautiful thing because when you sell the property, that payment gets passed on to the next owner. Uh, but that is something that we have had to collaborate with our state government on, um, something that other states really should be paying attention to. So these collaborations are really helping us meet our goal, uh, our ambitious goals. I'm proud to say that Oakland, uh, just in the last 10 years, has reduced our core emissions by 10%, and more importantly, our consumption emissions by 15%. And uh, we also think it's important that both governments and companies not just measure the emissions that come from 
that actual location, but also think about the emissions that are caused from any part of the planet when you are consuming goods within your boundaries. So those are some of the things that Oakland, California is doing. I'm excited to hear more about the conversation we're gonna have coming up. If I now look at Ken and Libby, you're sitting in, working from the state, working from the city, you've got ambitious climate action plans, you've got restless NGOs pounding at the door, uh, wanting to work with everyone. Um, you, you've, got, uh, you've got targets that you have to meet that are now, you're, you're now accountable for meeting those. Um, f uh, on behalf of the citizens. Um, talk to us a little bit about some of the interactions and how you, you know, work through partnerships to try to achieve the goals that your cities and, and your, your cities in the state of California have already set. I want to talk a little bit about um, how I work with my business community in Oakland. Uh, I, as you noted, I'm a relatively new mayor. I have not even finished my first year. But so one of the things that I have done is started to put together something that I'm calling a vision council. And these are my top corporate leaders, my largest employers, and, and kind of a representation of not just leadership in employment, but leadership in corporate citizenship. And as I went to these different CEOs to talk about what I wanted out of this council, and part of it is selling Oakland, right? That's my job as mayor, to promote my city, to make people excited about moving there, growing their businesses there. And also, how do we define our own brand of corporate citizenship? What does it mean to be part of the Oakland community? And part of what it clearly means in Oakland is to have a sustainability mindset, to care about things like climate change as well as other social equity issues. And I loved hearing the business case for this. So in the Bay Area, it's... In the... In the... Uh, my new change. Technology. <laughs> you know, obviously tech is a big part of our economy and what drives profits is attracting the best talent and there is fierce competition for talent right now. And what we're increasingly finding is that the best talent, particularly in our millennial workforce, wants to go to a company that is a lot more than just making money. They want to go to a company where there is psychic compensation at all, as well, and where things like caring about climate, being involved in the community, having a corporate responsibility platform is important to the workers. And that's also why we see a lot of companies moving to vibrant, exciting, diverse cities like Oakland, which is great for us. But I think it's really important to make that, again, economic argument about why climate change is something that is good for your bottom line, good for your company, as well as good for your city. And I'm just gonna add, I invite you to connect some of your cities with our city. So recently we became, Oakland became part of a coalition with 100 cities in China to share, again, municipal practices. And just one example that came out of that, uh, these Chinese cities had never thought about converting their own fleets. And so Oakland was able to show all the emission savings and money savings that we had by reducing the number of vehicles that as a municipal entity we run and how much uh, we saved by switching them over to hybrid as well as CNG. I already mentioned the renewable diesel. And again, this is just something that hadn't crossed their minds. And so the exchange of information city to city also is very powerful and we would be very interested in having a similar relationship with a hundred cities in India. I just would add the sense of urgency, that this is not some theoretical science fiction novel, <laughs> that this is real, it is impacting cities like ours today. I mean, we are furiously building up the levees of our airport so that it doesn't go underneath the bay. Um, <laughs> yesterday I was on a panel with a council member from Kotzebue, Alaska, who's lost a, more than one of her family members uh, who fell through thin ice and they were never able to even have the dignity of recovering the bodies of her loved ones. So climate change is real, it is upon us, so it is not 
time to be wimpy. <laughs> be bold. And, and know that you have all these other partners behind you. Uh, take strength from not just our commitment, but our successes that we have already demonstrated.